Hello everybody. <clears throat> Today we are going to discuss a new landscape in the management of adiposity medicine and a concept called ABCD, which is adiposity based chronic disease. We know that chronic care and chronic diseases are on the rise and mother of all diseases uh, lies in the adipocyte. And the ABCD model of adiposity based chronic disease has a direct implication on CMBCD which is cardiometabolic-based chronic disease. So we all know that the NCD explosion or non-communicable disease explosion has the underlying root as obesity. And we all recognize that all the chronic disease clusters which we see today in modern medicine are all related to obesity. What is obesity? It is a chronic relapsing progressive disease process characterized by abnormal and or excessive adiposity, which impairs or adversely impacts health. So the first recognizable thing which we need to recognize is obesity is a well-recognized disease. It's chronic, it's relapsing, it's progressive. It has abnormal or excessive adipose tissue, which is impairing or adversely affecting health. It has several factors like sleep, food, biology, mental health, food marketing, genomic risks, life events, stigma, so on and so forth. It is associated with 200 plus complications. It cuts short the lifespan and increases mortality and it impacts quality of life. We have probably a very large proportion of people who live in India with obesity and the approximate estimate is around 135 million because we are thin fat Indians. And clearly, if you see, multiple complications are associated with obesity. You can see here, the dark blue is grade 4, the lighter blue is 3, 2 and 1, which is the strength of evidence, very strong, strong, moderate or weak. So currently, you can see that more than 229 complications are affecting every organ system and medical specialty, starting from de novo type 2 diabetes, hypertension, coronary artery disease, cardiac failure, fatty liver, venous thromboembolism, gout, stroke, depression, endometrial cancers, breast cancers, colorectal cancers, atrial fibrillation, incident heart failure, you know, even C-sections or osteoarthritis. Then, of course, we have GRD. We have even congenital anomalies of the abnormal or newborn which are associated and renal cancer and so on and so forth. So, what is driving this ABCD or CMBCD? It is the phenotype. Now, uniquely, uh, you know, geographies like China, India have a phenotype which predisposes them to ABCD or CMBCD. We have rapidly urbanized our environment. We have become a global village, particularly with the internet explosion. We have a lot of socio-cultural factors. And as the affluence has gone up, as people have become more and more affluent, likelihood of adipose tissue depositing at abnormal sites has gone up. And of course, there is a genomic predilection and our food habits have become worse by the day. So in the Asian population, which is what I represent from the country of India, there is a natural selection and there is a clear genetic variant which influences obesity-related traits. This leads to higher thermogenic activity of the brown adipose tissue, which leads to an increased non-50 alleles in the ancestors of East Asians and South Asians which leads to a predilection to central obesity. So clearly we are thin fat Indians and the Asian phenotype carries more fat with the same BMI compared to the non-Asian phenotype. So we have as Asian Indians more fat, more total and abnormal region with less lean mass, less skeletal muscle mass and bone mineral density compared to other ethnic groups and which is why there is an explosion of type 2 diabetes and non-communicable diseases in this geography of South Asia. So for the same BM of 32, let me illustrate patient A, patient B and patient C. Patient C clearly represents the Caucasian phenotype, while patient A is a typical Asian Indian living within or outside of India, which is the thin fat Indian phenotype, where in the body composition, there is more fat. And clearly, therefore, for different BMI also, the lean mass can remain the same. So, we are seeing a new phase of malnutrition today. And this new phase of malnutrition we are seeing is called as low lean mass, 
which is present across all body weights and all BMIs. And this is the new modern phase of Asian malnutrition. And this is called as sarcopenia. Sarcos is muscle. Sarcopenia is less muscle. And across the whole Asian geography, right from East Asia of Japan, Korea, Taiwan, from Singapore, Malaysia, to India, Pakistan, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and various other countries, we can clearly recognize a less muscle mass and a low lean mass in our population. Current type 2 diabetes comes in clusters. Here you can see these clusters are based on the BMI, the waist, the hip, the fat, the insulin resistance, the triglycerides, the beta cell function, the insulin resistance, the area under the curve and the HDL. And we are now recognizing different clusters because there's a lot of heterogeneity in type 2 diabetes. So, for example, we, in these various clusters, we have some people which are overweight with normal insulin sensitivity and normal insulin resistance. And mostly they are normal, which is low risk. The cluster 2 is very low risk, where there is good insulin sensitivity, adequate beta cell mass. Again, they are normal. Then we have the third cluster, where there is a beta cell failure. They are overweight. Their insulin sensitivity is moderately low, but the beta cell output is poor. And they get mostly prediabetes, and they have an increased susceptibility to various abnormalities which we see and recognize. So clearly we can see that this cluster 4 is low-risk obese which is, again, having good insulin sensitivity and secretion and they are normal. Cluster 5 is highly insulin-resistant fatty liver phenotype, which is clearly seeing a lot of type 2 diabetes with high liver fat. And finally, we have the visceral adiposity with obesity, with low insulin sensitivity, normal or borderline uh, you know, insulin secretion, and predominantly a renal sinus fat and renal failure. So when we look at the chronic conditions, the first stage is genomic predisposition and family history. The second stage is pre disease where there is increased overweight, abnormal distribution of fat, abnormal function of fat, and all the biochemical abnormalities, insulin resistance. So in the first stage, there is only insulin resistance. As the disease moves, you get prediabetes. But in the third stage, the BMI, if it is used as a threshold, you get obesity. If you use anthropometry as a threshold, then you get thin fat Indians. And if you use biochemistry as a threshold, you get type 2 diabetes. And the four stages complication, which are cardiometabolic or biochemical and ultimately macro and microvascular. But BMI is a very, very poor measure. The reason I am asked to give this talk from a clinical standpoint is BMI is a very poor measure of individuals' adipose-related disease burden. It is the fat quantity, the fat quality, and the location that matters. So therefore, it is best to avoid the term obesity and instead we use the term adipocity or ABCD, adiposity-based chronic disease. The ABCD or adiposity is a key pathogenic driver of many conditions and represents a disease continuum. And therefore, based on the goals, the treatments and the outcomes will differ on the disease stage. So here you can see in the ABCD, clearly the primary drivers are unhealthy lifestyle and epigenetics. In the stage 1. In the stage 2, there is overweight and abnormal adiposity. Stage 3, there is abnormal adiposity. And finally, you have the outcomes. We have also a term called DBCD, which is diabetes or dysglycemia based chronic disease, where you get prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, and microvascular disease. Then we have HBCD, which is hypertension or high blood pressure based chronic disease, where there is prehypertension, hypertension, and hypertensive complications. Then we have LBCD which is lipid-based chronic disease, where there's abnormal lipids, dyslipidemia, and lipid-related complications. And finally, we have the actionable model, which has been derived, and this was all devised, these terms have been devised by Professor Jeffrey Mechanic, who is a direct medical director and past president of the American College of Clinical Technology, a good friend of ours. And the CMBCD is chronic, chronic cardiometabolic-based chronic disease, which is a metabolic syndrome in the older terminology, where you have subclinical atherosclerotic cardiovascular dysfunction, asymptomatic CVD, and symptomatic CVD. Well, in the DBCD model, glucose is the primary target. In the ABCD model, and overall, it encompasses obesity as a primary target. And therefore, we need to recognize that. So fundamentally, when we are looking at cardiometabolic-based chronic disease, we are looking at metabolic flexibility because it has an impact on lifespan. And clearly we recognize 
that the disease burden is huge because we know the global burden of deaths are all being driven by cardiovascular disease. Even today, the largest cause of death on planet Earth is cardiovascular disease. And these deaths are clearly driven by an ABCD, DBCD and CMBCD model. You can see that cardiovascular rates in India have exponentially grown up. The mortality has grown up. And particularly in the post-COVID time, we are seeing a higher incidence of cardiovascular disease, stroke and ischemic heart disease due to lack of recognition and follow-up which is being lost. Well, the clock of macrovascular clock of heart disease starts ticking very early in life. We know atherosclerotic plaques start at the age of 6 and 7. And by the time diabetes becomes overt, okay, macrovascular complications have already set in. And by the time the microvascular clock starts ticking, already there is de novo diabetes, which is overt and obvious. So fundamentally, the metabolic driver of cardiometabolic-based chronic disease needs a strategy for early interventions. And we need to control the metabolic drivers, including adiposity, dysglycemia and hypertension, A, B and C. And therefore, it's A for the adiposity and the A1C, B for basically blood pressure and C basically for the dysglycemia part and the dysinsulinemia part. So what is CMBCD? It is ABCD plus DBCD. So ABCD stands for adiposity-based chronic disease. It has two parts which reflects, as I earlier told you, adiposity-based reflection of mass, function and distribution and the chronic disease which reflects the risk, the presence and severity of complications. Then we have the DBCD term which reflects the different spectrum of diabetes from pre-diabetes to insulin resistance to over diabetes to diabetic complication and finally a combination of ABCD and DBCD results in a medically actionable model where we have a complex interrelationship between obesity, diabetes and heart disease which go hand in hand and therefore it's very very important to have primordial prevention, primary prevention, secondary prevention and tertiary prevention to prevent development of end-stage disease complications. So when we merge the ABCD, DBCD and CMBCD models, I'm reiterating this graph again. You can see that in the ABCD model, it is the abnormal amount of weight, the fat distribution of ectopic fat and the abnormal function of adipocyte, which drives cardiomechanical and biomechanical complications. Similarly, the glucose model of insulin resistance drives diabetes and micro microvascular complications. And similarly, when these two are merged, you get development of metabolic syndrome traits with glucose, dyslipidemia and hypertension driving heart disease, heart failure and atrial fibrillation. So clearly, adiposity and dysglycemia affects cardiovascular disease. We know that ABCD model increases the prevalence and the progression of coronary artery calcification. It also increases preserved and reduced ejection fraction and increases the prevalence of atrial fibrillation. Similarly, you can see that DBCD leads to more reactive platelets, higher risk of first myocardial infarction, decreased myocardial perfusion, apart from micro damage in the myocardium and cardiac lipoids. And overall, the metabolic CMBCD model will lead to more coronary plaques, more incidence of prevalence of first acute coronary event, and higher prevalence of all coronary artery disease, a heart failure, and atrial fibrillation, and death. So obviously, it's a combination of beta cell defect, insulin resistance, lipotoxicity, glucotoxicity, and that contributes to DBCD, ABCD, or CMBC. And therefore, it's very important to recognize whether it is metabolic or mechanical inflexibility. We need to have metabolic modulators for good health, and that is so crucial. So obviously, today's Treatment of type 2 diabetes. The reason we are talking as clinicians in this ABCD model is we need to move beyond a glucocentric approach to a weight centric, cardio centric, cardio obesity centric approach. And if you see the latest ADA ESP guidance, the latest RS is their ESI guidance, the proportion of type 2 diabetes which needs a weight centric approach is much more than those who need a glucocentric approach. And that is why this ABCD model has become more actionable. So obviously things happen because we are driving chronic disease models of adiposity, dysglycemia and cardiometabolism. Adiposity and dysglycemia are the key drivers 
for the number one cause of mortality worldwide. And therefore, weight control is as important as a primary target as glucose control. And it's just not weight. It is the adipose tissue reduction and shrinkage which will mitigate and prevent complications and death and prolong life, particularly through cardiovascular. My last mantra is always lifestyle. We are in best of times, but we are in worst of times. And therefore, if we have to make a difference on ABCD, DBCD or CMBCD, we need to eat slowly. We need to eat less. We need to eat on time. We need to eat right. We need to do a lot of physical activity, including 10,000 steps a day, do a lot of walk, build some muscle mass because we are sarcopenic. Do some yoga and meditation. Do ensure that you sleep on time, sleep well, and be stress-free and smile. That's really the core essence of the mantra to prevent ABCD models. It's equally important that when we are reducing glucose or DBCD, adipose tissue or ABCD, or the cardiometabolic risk, we need to be happy and healthy. And we are in digital times, and therefore we are into a digital meeting. We need to do one hour of digital detox every day because that has truncated the physical activity. And that's really been the challenge. So I hope from the exercise I have told you, you understood a little bit about the term ABCD and recognize that obesity, though is a recognizable disease, ABCD is much more granular in its depth. It's closely married to DBCD and is closely having a medical actionable model called CMBCD. So what you have listened, <clears throat> I hope you have learned. What you have learned, I hope you will adapt and you will follow a healthy lifestyle and sleep well. Thank you for a patient life.